Hello and welcome to our webinar, Macmillan Preview. I'm Annie Bostrom, Associate Editor, Adult Books. Before we begin, I'd like to go over some technical details. The audience is in listen-only mode, but we welcome any questions you may have. On the bottom of your screen is a toolbar with a section for Q&A. If you have a question or need technical assistance, simply click Q&A and type your message into the box that appears. We will do our best to respond to all tech-related questions and we'll pass along all other questions to today's panelists so they can follow up with you after the webinar. Links to today's slides were sent directly to you from Zoom at the start of the webinar, but you can also download them at any time by copying the URLs on this screen into your web browser. Tomorrow, all attendees will receive a follow-up email containing links to today's slide presentation um, certificate of completion and video recording. Today, we are so excited to be joined by a wonderful team of Macmillan panelists. Melissa Croce, Associate, <laughs> Associate Marketing Manager at Macmillan Children's Publishing Group. Talia Scherer, Senior Director of Macmillan Library Marketing. Anthony Parisi, Senior Director, sorry, Associate Director, School and Library Marketing at TOR. Emily Day, Library Marketing Coordinator and YA Specialist, Macmillan Library Marketing. Samantha Slavin, Library Marketing Assistant, Macmillan Library Marketing. Amanda Roundtree, Assistant Digital Media Manager, Macmillan Library Marketing. Issa Caban, Marketing Manager at TOR. And Andrew King, Marketing Assistant at TOR. First, we'll hear from the fabulous Macmillan Library Marketing team. Senior Director of Library Marketing, Talia Scherer, coordinates the library marketing activities of Macmillan's adult publishers, which include St. Martin's Press, Henry Holt, Tor Forge, Minotaur, Picador, Farrar Stra Strauss and Giroux, Flatiron Books, and Celadon. Talia was chair of the Association of American Publishers Trade Libraries Committee for four years and was proud to be named a 2010 Library Journal Mover and Shaker. Emily Day is the Library Marketing Coordinator and YA Specialist at Macmillan. After receiving her Master of Arts degree in Children's Literature from Simmons University, she moved to NYC and now calls Brooklyn home. She reads mostly YA and loves contemporary fiction and fairy tale retellings, but will occasionally spice things up with an adult psychological thriller. Emily was proud to be named a Publishers Weekly Star Watch honoree in 2019. Samantha Slavin is the Library Marketing Assistant for library, Macmillan Library Marketing. After spending four years eating her way through New Orleans, working in New Orleans tourism and marketing, and at a literary publici publicity firm, she found her way back home to NYC. Samantha owes her love of books and literature to years of library visits and a house filled with endless bookshelves. Samantha can always be found with a book, whether it's a memoir, historical fiction, fantasy, or contemporary fiction. And Amanda Roundtree is the Assistant Digital Media Manager for Library Marketing. After saying farewell to her home state of Georgia and attending NYU's Summer Publishing Institute, Amanda spent four years under the tutelage of the amazing Virginia Stanley at HarperCollins before joining Macmillan and eventually making her way back to her forever home in library marketing. A longtime lover of libraries, Amanda is excited to share her passion for all things fantasy, sci-fi, romance, and horror but she'll read anything that comes with a good recommendation. A big welcome to you all. The floor is yours. Thank you, amazing Annie. And thank you all for joining us today. I'm so excited to be welcoming you to Macmillan Mania. Here are all the various ways you can get in touch with us. We love hearing from you. So please reach out with any questions, concerns, virtual hugs, dog or cat pics, unsolicited advice, cookies. Next slide. Edelweiss. If you'd like to download Macmillan eGalleys on Edelweiss, here's how. The instructions can also be found on our website. Next slide. Library Reads. For those of you who participate in Library Reads, thanks so much. You're awesome. And if you don't know about Library Reads, do you live under a rock? It's a monthly list of top 10 books voted on by you, you can find more information about Library Reads and how to participate on our website. Next slide. Next slide. Genre for all. Do you love genre fiction? Are you ready to try something new? 
Check out Genre for All on the website for exclusive content, giveaways, recommendations, and more, all focused on fantasy, sci-fi, romance, and horror. Next slide, please. Oh my God. We begin at the end by Christopher Whitaker. This is a debut featuring badass 14-year-old Duchess Day Radley. 30 years ago, when Vincent King was a teenager, he was sent to the clink. He has served his time and is returning to his hometown. But that hometown is the same place where everything went wrong to begin with. It is where he murdered Duchess Day Radley's aunt. When Duchess looks for answers and revenge, she not only threatens her own family, but everyone close to her. For readers of Snow Falling on Cedars and Cold Mountain. Next slide. Stuff You Should Know, an incomplete compendium of mostly interesting things by Josh Clark and Chuck Bryant. One of the most listened to and popular podcasts is coming out of your earbuds and onto the page with this book for the curious. Josh and Chuck use their inquisitive nature to research and discuss how things work and why things are the way they are. The weird, fascinating, delightful, and unexpected from history, the cosmos, conspiracy theories, sign language, black boxes, the Panama Canal. Next slide, please. Piranesi by Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell author Susanna Clark. This is a fantasy and mystery full of wit, strangeness, magic, and crackling intelligence. Piranesi lives in a house with infinite rooms, endless corridors, walls lined with thousands of statues, and an ocean that floods the rooms. He lives to explore the house and for his visits with the only other occupant in the house, called The Other. But as Piranesi explores, evidence emerges of another person, and a terrible truth begins to unravel revealing a world beyond the one Piranesi has always known. This will be great for fans of Neil Gaiman's The Ocean at the End of the Lane and Madeline Miller's Circe. Next slide. Check by Marilyn Robinson. Just received a starred book list. Thank you, book list. We love you too. Robinson is winner of the Pulitzer Prize and the National Humani Humanities Medal. What have you done lately? With Jack, we return to the world of Gilead, Iowa. In segregated post-World War II St. Louis, Jack falls for Della Miles, an African-American high school teacher and preacher's daughter, and their relationship sums up the ongoing stresses of race relationships in post-emancipation emancipation America. Next slide. Migrations by Charlotte McConaughey. On the most basic level, this is a story of a near future where animals are quickly going extinct, and Franny Stone is on a journey to follow the last migration of the Arctic terns. Along with an adventure, this book is also a wake-up call to climate change and a love story. A love of life and of nature, but also a relationship. It's a broken childhood, it's friendship and heartbreak, and it is a stunning U.S. debut that has already received a starred book list review. Next slide. The Night Swim by Megan Golden already has two starred reviews from Booklist and PW. The Night Swim from the author of Library Reads pick The Escape Room is about a true crime podcast. So all the serial lovers and making a murderer listeners out there, rejoice! The Night Swim follows a podcast host. The first season was an overnight sensation and set an innocent man free. The third season isn't quite the same, but the host finds a small town rape trial to analyze. She then finds a note on her windshield asking for help. The notes keep coming and she realizes they might be related to her own sister's death. Hand this to Alice Feeney and B.A. Paris readers. Next slide. The Eighth Detective by Alex Pavesi is a debut from a mathematician and software engineer. We all know that murder mysteries must have three things, a victim, a suspect, and a detective. A math professor sat down and worked out all the different orders and possibilities of a mystery into seven perfect detective stories that he quietly published. Years later, an editor wants to revisit those stories and dis discovers inconsistencies that could be more than mere mistakes and finds herself with her own mystery to solve. With nods to Agatha Christie, Conan Doyle, Patricia Highsmith, I could keep going. The Eighth Detective is a love song to all the greats and a totally modern invention all at once. And it just got a starred book list review. Next slide, please. World Wild Vet Encounters in the Animal Kingdom by Evan Anton. And oh my God, look at that jacket. Are you looking? I can't tell, okay. This is James Harriet for Millennials. America's most popular vet and star of Animal Planet's Evan Goes Wild, Dr. Evan Anton shares stories from his experiences working with animals. Every animal on our planet, including corgis, my corgi, across the world adventures and a call to action to fight for our planet. Next slide, please. 
Luster by Raven Leilani is the story of a young Black woman who becomes tangled in the lives of her new, older lover, his wife, and their daughter, all while trying to cope and understand her own family life. But what makes this debut so great is the sharp social commentary, the beautiful, biting, and poignant descriptions of being a woman, of being Black, of being young and struggling, of being, a tr of being an artist in America. Luster is great for fans of My Year of Rest and Relaxation and Sally Rooney. Next slide, please. Glory, Magical Visions of Black Beauty by Karen and Regis Bethencourt. This stunning book of photographs reveals a new vision of blackness that America is hungry for. Husband and wife Karen and Regis Bethencourt are a power couple with a true talent for photography. The collection of photographs celebrate blackness through the wide lenses of fantasy, science fiction, and blends it all together with African-American, African, and Native American culture. This book will not only speak to Black parents and their children, but it has created a representation of their children and a reflection of their own power and beauty. The jaw-dropping photographs are compiled from over eight years of working with hundreds of children, families, and brands. Next slide, please. Before the Ruins by Victoria Gosling is a coming of age whodunit with romantic yearning and lots of angst in which childhood pals stumble upon a grand manner and drum up trouble that follows them for years. Next slide. Paris Never Leaves You by Ellen Feldman has a starred library journal review. Ellen Feldman, author of Terrible Virtue and The Boy Who Loved Anne Frank is back with more historical fiction. But this is not just another World War II novel. It has a Paris bookshop and the clubby elegance of 1950s New York City. It's about a mother and daughter settling into the Upper East Side of Manhattan after living through, through World War II in Paris. There's love, resilience, and impossible choices to be made. Next slide, please. The Darkest Evening by Anne Cleves. New York Times bestselling and award-winning author Anne Cleves is here with the ninth book in the Vera Stanhope series that already has a start PW. This book finds Vera investigating a murder at her estranged family's home. Cue the snowstorm. A car skidding off the road. The driver is gone, but a toddler strapped in the back seat. As Vera tracks down secrets in a blizzard, she'll also begin to uncover her family's complicated past. Next slide. Imperfect Women by Araminta Hall. This is the Library Reads author of Our Kind of Cruelty. This heart-wrenching psychological thriller charts the fraught lives of three best friends from university after one dies and the remaining two wrestle with their grief and dark secrets surface that reveal how little they knew their friend, each other, and maybe even themselves. It's got fascinating, flawed, familiar women with buried and festering secrets that can become lethal. It's less Gillian Flynn and more Leanne Moriarty, making it the perfect mix of Nine Perfect Strangers meets All We Ever Wanted. Next slide. Dear Child by Romy Hossman is a psychological thriller and U.S. debut that is Gone Girl Meets Room. The book begins in the aftermath of a daring escape, and it's told from three points of view, one of which is a little girl who arrives at the hospital with her unconscious mom. She only knows her mother's name and that her father was the captor. But is her mother Lena really who she says she is? Next slide. Don't Look For Me by Wendy Walker. Nicole heads to the town where her mother was last seen and begins uncovering details. Another vanished woman, a hole in the fence surrounding an isolated property that could lead her to the truth. Next slide. The Patron Saint of Pregnant Girls by Ursula Hagee. The circus has arrived on the German island of Neustrin in 1878, but a terrible wave sweeps away three children and those most affected include a young woman who gives birth that day at St. Margaret's home for pregnant girls. The small town German setting is completely captivating, and part of the novel's charm is the portraits of eccentric town people, from the men and women competing with and sabotaging one another to be crowned oldest person, to the complex surprising nuns who run the home for unwed mothers, to the circus performers who come through each season. At its heart, this is a novel about women tested by unimaginable adversity who come together and help one another heal, for readers of Water for Elephants and The Stars Are Fire. Next slide. Welcome to the New World by Jake Halpern and Michael Sloan. This graphic novel originally ran in the New York Times and won the Pulitzer for editorial cartooning. It tells the story of a Syrian family of seven who escapes a Syrian prison and lands in New York City on the day Trump is elected. 
With limited English, few friends, and no money, the Aldabon family resettles in Connecticut as they attempt to navigate job training programs, high school with a hijab, death threats, ignorance, and cruelty. Welcome to the New World is a wholly original view of the immigrant experience delivered with warmth and intimacy about an America that is simultaneously uplifting and heartbreaking. Next slide, please. Take It Back by Kia Abdullah is perfect for fans of Law & Order SVU. When Jody, a 16-year-old girl taunted for her facial deformities, accuses four boys from Muslim immigrant families of rape, London lawyer turned rape counselor Zara Khalil, also Muslim, helps prepare her for the forthcoming trial. Next slide, please. Under Pressure by Robert Povey. This is the second novel featuring Dr. Lucas Page, astrophysicist, math genius, and former FBI agent. Page is drawn back in again when an explosion in New York City kills over 700 people, and they need the extra computational power. While everyone is crying terrorism, Page is convinced that there are more sinister motives afoot. Fans of Jeffrey Deaver's Lincoln Rhyme novels and David Baldacci's Amos Decker books will love this series and its reluctant but impressive protagonist. Next slide. A User's Guide to Democracy, How America Works by Nick Cavadice and Hannah McCarthy. With more Americans than ever wanting to be politically aware and engaged, A User's Guide to Democracy is the perfect and accessible step. Filled with witty text and political cartoons from New Yorker cartoonist Tom Toro, this is a field guide that everyone can use for anyone who's ever asked, what does the Secretary of Defense do all day? What is federalism? Who manages my taxes? Healthcare, safety? Because it's finally time to understand who does what, how they do it, and the best way to get them to listen to you. Next. All of the Lionheart, Lost Love, Imperial Spies, and One Woman's Journey into the Heart of Africa by Brad Riga. Rika, whose Mrs. Sherlock Holmes was an Edgar Award nominee for Best Fact Crime, portrays another intriguing woman in All of the Lionheart. Scottish aristocrat Olive McLeod, who bounded down to Africa in the early 1900s when her naturalist fiance went missing, carrying secrets of her own. Think a female Indiana Jones meets Jane Eyre. Olive traverses deadly swamps, lions, and cannibals on a quest to Africa. This biography draws on Olive's own letters and secret diaries to tell this never-before-told true adventure of a woman not content to stay behind, a la Henrietta Lacks and the Lost City of Z. Next slide, please. The Night Workers by Brian Selfin. Selfin is the former chief investigative analyst for the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office. In his debut, Shady Shecky Keenan is panicked because his crime family's new runner, mysterious artist Emil Scott, has vanished with a huge bag full of dirty money. This is a la Steve Hamilton, Kate Atkinson, and Dennis Lehane. Next slide, please. Nothing Can Hurt You by Nicola May Goldberg is a thrilling debut inspired by a true story that explores the aftermath of a student's death and its impact on the lives of other college students. In 1977, Sarah Morgan was killed in the woods surrounding her small liberal arts college. Each chapter is narrated by a different voice, all people who were touched by Sarah's murder. For readers of Megan Abbott and Peter Heller. Next slide, please. Likes by Sarah Swanyan Bynum, a New Yorker, 20 under 40, a National Book Award finalist for Madeline is Sleeping. Bynum captures the contemporary moment in her distinctively lyrical, off-kilter language, with nine stories featuring surprised hosts, fading indie film stars, desperate workers, and an Instagram-crazed 12-year-old, all steering through life's everyday battles. Next slide, please. Other People's Pets by R.L. Mazes has a starred library journal. When you relate better to animals and have a locksmith thief for a father, there's only one reasonable path for you to take in life. Go to vet school and then start robbing houses to pay your father's legal fees. And that is exactly what Lala Fine does. The reviews all have one word in common, remarkable, for fans of A Dog's Way Home. Next slide, please. Stories from Suffragette City, stories of a fine and proper nuisance, edited by MJ Rose and Fiona Davis. 2020 is the 100th anniversary of women's right to vote. This is a collection of short stories from best-selling writers, all written about the same day, October 23rd, 1915, a day when over one million women marched for the right to vote in New York City. These short stories come from leading voices in historical fiction, including our very own Kristen Hanna. Next slide, please. The Garden of Promises and Lies by Paula Braxton. From the best-selling author of The Witch's Daughter, The Little Shop of Found Things, and Secrets of the Chocolate House comes her newest novel combining fantasy, historical romance, 
and why a crossover. This time, an antique wedding dress draws Xanthi back to 1815, and she brings her boyfriend Liam back with her, putting both of their lives on the line. Next slide. The Book Collectors, a band of Syrian rebels and the stories that carry them through a war by Delphine Menui. Under siege for years, with its residents eventually suffering forced displacement, the ancient, Syri the ancient Syrian city of Daria held a remarkable secret. Residents searching for survivors after a bombing discovered a mother load of books and began to collect more, within a month housing 15,000 volumes in a secret library where young men gathered to read, talk, and dream of a better future. In 2015, award-winning French-Iranian journalist Minoui learned of the library and interviewed one of the founders over WhatsApp and Facebook. And Nancy Pearl is already a fan. Next slide, please. Feline philosophy, cats in the meaning of life by John Gray. Oxford political scientist Gray returns to feline philosophy, showing what while humans, that while humans strive for meaning and the even more elusive happiness, cats could give two shits. Next slide, please. Good Morning Monster, a therapist shares five historic stories of emotional recovery by Katherine Gildener. From a clinical psychologist comes a compelling narrative on five of her most heroic and memorable patients over her 25 years in a private practice. This story details her patient struggles, their path to recovery, and her own story of growing as a therapist, while also presenting a mystery with each patient that gets unpacked over the years. For readers of Maybe You Should Talk to Someone and Love's Executioner, but also The Glass Castle and Educated. Next slide, please. The Glass House by Beatrice Collin. This beautiful historical fiction is set on a remote Scottish estate about an heiress, the mysterious woman from India who shows up on her doorstep and the secrets that become too explosive to conceal. The Glass House transports readers to a turn of the century world that, that people may not know about. And it's also a shoe in for book clubs as it delves into hot button issues such as race, class, women's rights, inheritance, and family conflict. And this to readers of A Well-Behaved Woman and The Women in the Castle. Next slide. Deception at Thorncrest by Ashley Weaver. In the next entry in the Edgar nominated series from Weaver, a technical services coordinator at the Allen Parish Libraries in Oberlin, Louisiana, Amory Ames contentedly awaits the birth of her child at her country estate, Thorncrest, when a stranger drops in claiming to be the second Mrs. Ames. Ruh row. Amory's husband, Milo, quickly puts paid to that idea, but more issues of confused identity arrive with a second visitor, and suddenly a stable hand is dead. Next slide, please. Murder in Old Bombay by Nev March. This is the winner of the Mystery Writers of America first novel competition. This homage to Sherlock Holmes is set in 1892 Bombay with Captain Jim in a military hospital with little to do but read newspapers. Ah, uh, what a life. That is until a case of two women falling from a university clock tower catches his attention. Next slide, please. At Night, All Blood is Black by David Diop. David Diop's English language debut explores terror and transformation in the trenches of the First World War. French fighting Senegalese Alphen Daye is devastated by his friend's death. He sneaks behind enemy lines each night to seek out revenge, and each night he brings back a severed hand. Blending Senegalese rhythms, folklore, and oral storytelling traditions with the gritty day-to-day -day journalistic horror of life in the trenches, David Diop's At Night All Blood is Black is a dazzling tale of one man's descent into madness and a virtually unknown corner of military history, as well as an Afrocentric take on the European war novel. Next slide. Owls of the Eastern Ice, A Quest to Find and Save the World's Largest Owl by Jonathan C. Slott. Russia and Northeast Asia coordinator for the Wildlife Conservation Society, Slott recaps his adventurous five years, drinking vodka with hermits, rushing across thawing rivers, as he studies the elusive Blackestons fish owl, largest of his genus, found only in far Northeast Russia, Korea, and Japan. Owls of the Eastern Ice has already received two starred reviews with Library Journal saying, Slat's extensive field research is rendered into clear, readable prose, making it a solid choice for bird lovers, but also for armchair travelers looking for an eco-adventure on the fringes of civilization. And Kirkus chimes in with top-notch nature writing in service of a magnificent, vulnerable creature. Next slide. Dark Archives, a librarian's investigation into the science and history of books found in human skin by Megan Rosenblum. This is a book about books by a librarian. Megan Rosenblum is a medical librarian, aka the perfect person to write about books found in, wait for it, human skin. 
Mary Roach said it best, a gorgeous dive into the humanity and inhumanity of the people behind and on these strangely captivating books. Propelled by curiosity and bibliophilia, Rosenblum travels far and wide and deep within, taking us to unimaginable places. This is a masterful work, enlightened and enlivened by Rosenblum's scholarship and her involvement with the death positive movement. If there were a word to just a word for the perfect pairing of author and subject and the giddy joy that pairing brings to the reader, I'd be using it right now. Next slide. Magic, a history from alchemy to witchcraft from the ice age to the present by Chris Gosden. For all the aspiring witches, wizards, and Hogwarts students among us, this author draws on decades of research. This is a cultural history of magic that dares us to rethink our relationship with the word and the world. Next slide. The Seventh Mansion by Maurice Mayer is a dark debut examining activism, love, and purpose through the coming of age story of an awkward and environmentally concerned 16 year old who frees a captive mink from a local farm. When he is the only one caught, he's kicked out of school and turns towards nature and exploring the woods, where he finds a relic of a Catholic saint, hides it in his bedroom, and develops a passionate relationship with the bones and the spirit of the saint. Balancing the extreme idealism of teenagehood with drastic real wood stakes, the Seventh Mansion is an unforgettable dive into finding solace during personal and global catastrophe. Mayor's short story collection, Rag, received two star reviews and was a Library Journal Best Book of 2019, so we are very excited to introduce her to a wider audience with her first full-length novel. And next slide. Thank you all. Um, next, we'll hear from the tour marketing team. Anthony Parisi is the Associate Director of School and Library Marketing at TOR, coordinating library initiatives for both their adult and children's titles. As an avid reader of YA and adult fiction, Anthony is thrilled to share book recommendations with educators and librarians. Issa Caban is the Marketing Manager for TOR Teen Starscape, as well as the School and Library Marketing Manager for TOR. Issa enjoys collaborating on school and library initiatives for adult and children's titles helping to give back to the community of educators and librarians who gave her so much growing up. And Andrew King is the marketing assistant for Tom Doherty Associates School and Library, as well as TDA's Tour Teen and Starsca Starscape imprints. He has previously interned with Algonquin Books in digital marketing and with the Carolina Quarterly. His book, Weakness, are protagonists who are deadpan snarkers. Thanks for being here, Anthony, Issa, and Andrew. Take it away. Thank you, and hi everyone. I'm Anthony Parisi, the Associate Director of School and Library Marketing at TOR, and I'm joined by my fellow colleagues, Issa Caban and Andrew King, to tell you all about what's new and upcoming from our adult imprints, TOR, Forge, and TOR.com Publishing. Of course, if there's anything you're interested in, we have e-galleys available for most every title here on NetGalley and Edelweiss, so please go ahead and request away. And on that note, I'm going to dive right in as we have a long list of amazing sci-fi, fantasy, and other genre titles coming your way this summer and fall. Next slide, please. And first up from our Forge imprint, we have Of Mutts and Men by Spencer Quinn. This is the latest in the New York Times and USA Today best-selling Chet and Bernie series that Stephen King, yes, that Stephen King, calls the best one yet and suspenseful, laugh out loud funny, and surprisingly tender. What's so wonderful about this series is that each book is a standalone, making it easy for new readers to enter the series at any time. The series follows Chet the dog, who is the most lovable narrator in all of crime fiction, according to the Boston Globe, and his partner, P.I. Bernie Little of the Little Detective Agency. In Of Mutts and Men, Chet and Bernie arrive to a meeting with hydrologist Wendell Nero only to discover that the man has come to a violent and mysterious end. Now the pair have to determine why the hydrologist wanted to see them and whether his death is a random robbery or something more sinister, leading them to an investigation that only Chet and Bernie can solve. A Mutt and Men is perfect for fans of the long-standing series already, as well as anyone new who is interested in diving into a fun and delightful mystery told from the unique point of view of a dog. Next. And Now She's Gone by Thriller Award nominee, Rachel Housel Hall. This novel is as gorgeous as its cover, 
featuring two complicated women in a dangerous cat and mouse game. And now she's gone, explores the nature of secrets and how violence and fear can lead you to abandon everything in order to survive. In the novel, you follow Grayson Sykes. It's up to Grayson to find Isabel Lincoln, who has recently disappeared. But the question is, is she really missing? Although Grayson is reluctant to track down a woman who may not want to be found, Gray's search for Isabel Lincoln becomes more complicated and dangerous with every new revelation about the woman's secrets and the truth she's hidden from her friends and family. We've been receiving great praise for the book so far with Wendy Walker saying it's one hell of a read. And Now She's Gone has all the ingredients that are hot in a thriller genre right now. Psychological suspense, a twisty plot, complicated women, and a dark edge. I would recommend this for fans of Ruth Ware, Karen Slaughter, Lisa Gardner, and Leanne Moriarty. Next slide. A Dog's Perfect Christmas by W. Bruce Cameron. It's never too early to start thinking about Christmas, right? This is the perfect feel-good holiday gift from the number one New York Times and USA Today bestselling author who brought us A Dog's Purpose. In A Dog's Perfect Christmas, the holidays are swiftly approaching when the Goss family suddenly faces a life or death crisis. Setting their differences aside to come together to weather the storm is easier said than done. And the last thing the family needs right now is to add a little lost puppy into the mix. But as we sometimes realize, the most priceless holiday gifts are the unexpected ones. This charming tale will make you laugh, will make you cry, and open your hearts to the true meaning of the holiday season. We have W. Bruce Cameron books for all level of readers. In fact, you will even hear about some of his new early chapter books later on in this presentation. And now with A Dog's Perfect Christmas, Bruce is bringing stories just right for the holidays. This book is priced and sized to fit perfectly in a loved one's stocking and will be the season's heartwarming story about love, puppies, and Christmas magic that you don't want to miss. Next, we are moving along to our tour imprint. Next slide. We have Trouble the Saints by Aliyah Don Johnson. Trouble the Saints splits focus between three gifted characters as they struggle against their fates and the pervasive racism of America right at the cusp of World War II. The main character, Phyllis LeBlanc, is mixed race but passes for white to mingle with New York City's mobsters, using her supernatural knife-throwing skills to kill people her boss assures her are worthy of killing. But when Phyllis reunites with her ex-boyfriend, who happens to be a cop, she begins to doubt her line of work. The police officer, Dev, also has magic abilities of his own. He can foretell threats against anyone he touches. He and Phyllis then escape the mob and head to Dev's childhood home in upstate New York. And while there, the couple become entangled in a disagreement between a white family and an erratic young black man who has powers of his own. Racial tensions explode into violence and the truths that each character refuses to acknowledge ultimately come into a dangerous conclusion. This is a lush, beautifully written novel that offers a very nuanced portrait of racism and magical love story and alternate secret history. Fans of diverse fantasy will love this story and its characters, and readers of Alice Hoffman will appreciate this sweeping historical saga with, of course, hints of magic, mystery, and romance. Next, Unconquerable Sun by Kate Elliott. For the first time in nearly two decades, Kate Elliott has gone back to her roots and has brought to her a phenomenal space opera trilogy based on her favorite historical person, Alexander the Great, but gender swapped, using her skill in world building and politi political intrigue to a galactic scale. And we have three incredible starred reviews so far with Booklist saying, fans of Lois McMaster Bejold and N.K. Jemisin will find this a candidate for instant rereading as soon as the last page is turned. We are so excited about this new sci-fi adventure story. Set in a rich universe full of political intrigue, the book follows Princess Sun, who has now finally come of age. But the ruthless ambassador and conniving noble houses have never ceased to scheme, and they have plans that need Sun to be removed as heir, or better yet, dead. To survive, the princess must rely on her wits and three companions, her biggest rival, her secret lover, and a dangerous prisoner of war. Take the brilliance and cunning courage of Princess Leia, Add in a dazzling futuristic setting where pop culture and propaganda are one and the same and hold on tight as this is the space opera you've all been waiting for. Unconquerable Sun is out soon on July 7th. And next slide, Issa will tell you what's coming up next from tour. Thanks, Anthony. Hi, everyone. I'm Issa Caban. And next up, 
we have deal with the devil. Prepare yourself for fiery, and I mean fiery in all caps, mercenary librarian energy this summer with the release of Deal with the Devil from USA Today and New York Times bestselling author duo Kit Roca. Set against the backdrop of a post-apocalyptic America, Nina and her band of mercenary librarians use their knowledge and combat skills to save the hopeless. When Nina collides with Knox, a battle-weary captain of a group of AWOL super soldiers, the two team up in hopes of defeating a mutual enemy. It isn't long before sparks fly between Nina and Knox, but can their romance survive the deadly collision course thereon? This first book in this near future sci-fi series is packed with exhilarating action and sizzling romantic tension, making it the perfect escapist read to add to your reading list this summer. Perfect for fans of Orphan Black, National Treasure, and Marvel's Avengers, Deal with the Devil is out July 28th. Next. Christopher Paolini, the best-selling author of the worldwide phenomenon Aragon, brings readers his first adult sci-fi novel this fall, To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. When scientist Kira Navarez discovers a mysterious relic on a distant planet, her life will never be the same and neither will the fate of humanity. Fans of thrilling sci-fi epics such as Annihilation and Arrival will marvel at Paolini's inventive world building and immersive storytelling when To Sleep in a Sea of Stars releases on September 15th. Next. Number one New York Times bestselling author V. Schwab brings readers her most intimate and ambitious novel yet. Spanning three centuries, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue tells the story of a desperate girl who makes a deal with the devil to live as many lives as she can only to find out that everyone she knows or meets will be doomed to forget her. But everything changes when after 300 years, Addie stumbles across a young man in a hidden bookstore and he remembers her name. Readers will embark on a remarkable journey with Addie across centuries and continents as she tries to make her mark on a world fated to forget her. This novel has already received a starred review from Publishers Weekly, which deemed The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue a knockout. Perfect for fans of The Night Circus and Circe, experience Schwab's highly anticipated genre-defying tour de force when it releases on October 6th. Next. Experience the limitless and pure joy of award-winning author Sishin Liu's writing and imagination in this stunning new short story collection of captivating visions of the future and incredible reimaginings of the past. Published for the very first time in English, these stories will take readers across time and space through the eyes of one of science fiction's most visionary writers. Check out To Hold Up the Sky when it releases on October 20th. Next. Robert Jordan is one of the best known and beloved names in epic fantasy. Since its debut in 1990, his Wheel of Time series has captivated millions of readers around the globe with its scope, originality, and compelling characters. This fall, Tor is celebrating the 30th anniversary of the series with a special hardcover edition of the first volume in the saga, The Eye of the World. Featuring a redesigned jacket, four color end papers, a new introduction from Brandon Sanderson, and so much more, the special edition will delight longtime fans and new readers. With the highly anticipated Amazon Prime Wheel of Time series currently in production, there is no better time for readers to revisit this beloved saga or experience it for the very first time. The 30th anniversary edition of The Eye of the World releases on October 20th. Next. Cory Doctorow's Attack Surface is a new standalone novel set in the world of his New York Times bestsellers, Little Brother and Homeland. In her day job as a counterterrorism wizard for a transnational cybersecurity firm, Masha Maximo made the hacks that allowed repressive regimes to spy on dissidents and manipulate their every move. The perks were fantastic and the pay was obscene. When her targets were strangers in faraway police states, it was easy to compartmentalize, but when the hacks and the exploits she's devised are directed at her friends and family, including boy wonder Marcus Yalo, her old crush and arch rival, and his entourage of friends, Masha realizes she has to choose. Dr. Rowe's new fast-paced techno thriller tackles timely issues of surveillance, liberation, and morality that will resonate with new readers and longtime fans of the Little Brother series. Attack Surface is available October 13th. Next. 
Thank you, Issa. Uh, hi, I'm Andrew King. And uh, next from Tor Books, we have Rhythm of War. The Stormlight Archive saga continues in this highly anticipated fourth book in the iconic series from best-selling author and master storyteller Brandon Sanderson. Fans will remember when Stormlight Archive number three, Oathbringer, took the number one spot on the New York Times bestseller list and their breath away with a suspenseful cliffhanger ending that will propel millions of readers into book four. And there's no better time than right now for new readers to immerse themselves in the Stormlight Archive. Books one through three are all available in paperback and Rhythm of War is arriving at last. Rhythm of War will be available in stores on November 17th. And next, now we're going to take some time to talk about our exciting and upcoming titles from Tor.com Publishing uh, next. Starting with Harrow the Ninth by Tamsin Weir. The necromancers are back and gayer than ever as Harrow the Ninth continues the funny, adventurous, and bone-chilling story that began in Gideon the Ninth. Magic sword fights, mythic beasts, and murder most foul are only part of the mess of chaos that will be unleashed when Harrowhark meets the Necrolord Prime, Emperor Undying of the Nine Houses in this snarky and suspenseful series with broad SFF appeal. Gideon the Ninth's humor, cheerful nihilism, and queer yearning have inspired a rabid fandom, producing a constant outpouring of fan art, cosplay, and fan fiction like we've never seen for a first book in a series. And those fans will love Harrow even more. The trade paperback of book one comes out on July 14th, which is just enough time for new fans to read it before Harrow the Ninth releases on August 4th. It's the perfect time to dive into this series if you haven't already. Next. We have Master of Poisons by Andrea Hairston. Uh, Award-winning author Andrea Hairston weaves together African folktale and post-colonial literature into the unforgettable fantasy that is Master of Poisons, the book that Daniel Jose Older called Medicine for a Broken World. The world is changing. Poison desert eats good farmland and once sweet water turns foul. To get caught in a storm is death. To live and do nothing is death. This book is about an old spy master and a young woman training to become a powerful griot. And this book is for the many readers hungry for own voices epic fantasy. In a star review, Publishers Weekly called Master of Poisons urgent and gorgeous, a rich tapestry of folklore and adventure. Hairston's characteristic lush prose burns this world into being and will be available September 8th. Next. We have Ring Shout by P. DeJolly Clark. Nebula, Locus, and Alex Award winner P. DeJolly Clark returns with a dark fantasy historical novella that gives a supernatural twist to the Ku Klux Klan's reign of terror. The year is 1915. The birth of a nation has just released and all across the country, the Klan rides. They plan to bring hell to earth, but even Ku Kluxes can die and Maurice Bordreau and her fellow resistance fighters aim to prove that fact again and again. But something awful's brewing in Macon, and the war on hell's about to heat up. Peter Jolly Clark couldn't write a bad book if he tried, says Victor Lavelle, author of The Changeling and The Ballad of Black Tom. Ring Shout is fantastically fun, even as its core is as serious as can be. Here's a novella perfect for anyone who's also excited about the upcoming HBO series, Lovecraft Country, and is the perfect book for readers who love horror and suspense and hate racists. Ring Shout is available on October 13th. Next. And finally from Tor.com, we have Over the Woodward Wall by A. Deborah Baker. New York Times bestselling and multiple award-winning author Shannon McGuire returns under a pen name to give us a captivating world of talking trees, sarcastic owls, mermaids, and queens. In addition to newcomers to Shannon's work, fans of her massively popular middle game will be delighted to now read Over the Woodward Wall, which expands on the mythology of that universe. This is a story about two children who are complete opposites, lost in an impossible land called the Up and Under, and how they might find themselves and each other and maybe a way back home. You can delve into the Up and Under with them when Over the Woodward Wall releases on October 6th. Next. 
Thank you so much for all of your time. We hope you enjoyed hearing about our titles and that you're as excited about them as we are. And if you are, we encourage you to follow the social handles on this slide for more on these and other amazing books. Thanks again, and we hope you enjoy the rest of today's event. Thank you. Thank you so much, Team Tour. Our next presenter will be Melissa Croce. Melissa Croce is the Associate Marketing Manager for Macmillan Children's School and Library team. She's been with the company for nearly five years. Her, fav her favorite Macmillan books to read are graphic novels, middle grade nonfiction, and young adult fantasy. Thus far, she's passed time while in quarantine by throwing herself into half a dozen new projects, including starting a tiny letter, a book club, and embroidery watching the new Emma movie three times, puzzling, trying to become a yogi, and of course, reading. Thanks for being here, Melissa. Um, next. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. I will say in an addendum to my bio that I have now seen the Emma movie six times, and I would highly recommend it. Um, some housekeeping before I get started. Please take note of any titles with the neck alley icon, the screen in the bottom left hand corner of the slides, as I won't be able to send out any physical copies of titles. If you have any other questions, my contact info will be at the very end of my presentation. So let's get started. Next. First, we have Unrig, How to Fix Our Broken Democracy by Daniel G. Newman, illustrated by George O'Connor, my one title for adults, and the opener for a new series by First Second uh, called World Citizen Comics. This stirring nonfiction graphic novel um, by democracy reform leader Daniel Newman and artist George O'Connor takes readers behind the scenes from the sweaty cubicles where senators dial corporate CEOs for dollars to lavish retreats where billionaires boost their favorite candidates to the map rooms where lawmakers scheme to handpick their voters. Next. Unrig also highlights surprising solutions that limit the influence of big money and redraw the lines of political power. If you're overwhelmed by negative news and despairing for the direction of our country, Unrig is a tonic that will restore your faith and reveal the path forward to fix our broken democracy. Next. Moving on to young adult titles, we have White Fox by Sarah Faring. The author of the chilling thriller, The Tenth Girl, is back. After their world-famous actor mother disappeared under mysterious circumstances, Manon and Thais left their remote Mediterranean island home. Rather, they were sent away by their pharma tech tycoon father. Opposites in every way, the sisters drifted apart in their grief, yet their mother's unfinished story still haunts them both, and they can't put to rest the possibility that she might still be alive. Lured home a decade later, Manon and Thais discover their mother's legendary last work, and long thought lost, White Fox, a screenplay filled with enigmatic metaphors. The clues in this dark fairy tale draw them deep into the island's surreal society, into the twisted secrets hidden by their glittering family to reveal the truth about their mother and themselves. Next. Okay, here we have Flamer by Mike Curato, the author of the picture book series, Little Elliot is Back, but this time with his first YA graphic novel that's based loosely on his own adolescence. It's the summer between middle school and high school and Ada Navarro is away at camp. Everyone's going through the same changes, but for Aiden, the stakes feel higher as he navigates friendships, deals with bullies, and spends time with Elias, a boy he can't stop thinking about. He finds himself on a path of self-discovery and acceptance. Next. In addition to being beautifully drawn, this book is so incredibly powerful. It tackles homophobia, racism, and toxic masculinity in such a haunting way. As Kirk has said in their recent start review, this is a story that will be read and reread, and for some, it will be the defining book of their adolescence. Buy it, read it, share it. If you want to hear more from Mike, he'll actually be participating in an upcoming graphic novel panel with Booklist on July 24th. Next. Here is I Am Here Now by Barbara Botner. Maisie's first day of high school should be exciting, but all she wants to do is escape. Her world is lonely and chaotic with an abusive mother and a father who's rarely there to help. So when Macy, who finds refuge in art, meets the spirited Rachel and her mother, a painter, she catches a glimpse of a very different world, one full of life, creativity, and love, and latches on. But she discovers her strength through Rachel's family, and Macy, increasingly desperate, finds herself risking new friendships in the very future she's searching for. Set in the 1960s, this is a beautiful novel in verse about one's artist coming of age. It's heartbreaking, powerful, and inspiring depiction of what it's like to shatter your life and piece it back together. And it has just received a star from, book, from Hornbook. Next. Okay. Calling all you fans of Empire Records, 
in This Is All Your Fault by Amina May Safi, three young women are determined to save their local bookstore. Rin Oliveira is finally going to tell her longtime crush, AJ, that she's in love with him. Daniela writes poetry for her own account, but nobody knows that it's her. Imogen is just trying to make it through the day. When Rin, Danielle, and Imogen clock into work at the Wild Nights Bookstore and Emporium on the first day of summer, they're expecting the hours to drift by the way they always do. Instead, they have to deal with the news that the bookstore is closing. Before the day is out, there will be shaved heads, a diva author, and a very large shipment of Air Jordans to contend with. And it will take all of three of them working together if they have any chance to save their beloved bookstore. Next. New York Times bestselling author Jeff Vandermeer, creator of Annihilation, is diving into young adult with A Peculiar Peril, a head-spinning epic about three friends on a quest to protect the world, well, multiple worlds, from a terrifying threat. Jonathan stands to inherit his deceased grandfather's overstuffed mansion once he and two schoolmates catalog its creepy contents. But the three soon discover that the house is filled with more than just oddities. It holds clues linking to an alternate Earth called Aurora, where the notorious English occultist Alistair Crowley has a storm back to life on a magic field rampage across a surreal through the looking glass version of Europe filled with talking animals and vegetables. Swept into encounters with allies more unpredictable than enemies, Jonathan pieces together his destiny as a member of a secret society devoted to keeping our world separate from Aurora. But as the ground shifts and allegiances change with every step, he and his friends sink ever deeper into a deadly pursuit of the profound evil that is also chasing after them. To paraphrase what Booklist said in a recent start review, this book is a wild ride that takes the peculiar darkness of Ransom Rakes in the Peregrine series and the absurd humor and wit of Terry Pratchett. Next. Next is the graphic novel Displacement by Kiku Hughes. Kiku is on vacation in San Francisco when suddenly she finds herself displaced to the 1940s Japanese American internment camp that her late grandmother Ernestina was forcibly relocated to during World War II. These displacements in time keep occurring until Kiku finds herself stuck back in time. Living alongside her young grandmother and other Japanese citizens in internment camps, Kiku gets the education she never received in history class. Next. She witnesses the lives of Japanese Americans who were denied their civil liberties and suffered greatly, but managed to cultivate community and commit acts of resistance in order to survive. Kiku Hughes's Kiki Hughes weaves a riveting, bittersweet tale that highlights the intergenerational impact and power of memory. Next. Here we have Kind of a Big Deal by Shannon Hale. The only thing worse than high school itself is peaking in high school, and nobody knows that better than Josie Pye. She was what you would call kind of a big deal. She dropped out of high school after all to become a star. But as we all know, the bigger you are, the harder you fall, and Josie fell super hard. Her entire life, in fact, keeps imploding. Broadway dream, dead. Best friend, distant. Boyfriend, busy. Desperate to escape, Josie gets into reading, literally. She reads a book and suddenly she's inside it. And with each book, she's a different character. A post-apocalyptic heroine, the lead in a rom-com, a 17th century wench in a corset. It is alarming, but also like kind of amazing. It's the perfect way to live out her fantasy since reality sucks. Book after book, Josie the failed star finds a new way to shine. But the longer she stays in a story, the harder it becomes to escape. Will Josie find a story so good that she just stays forever? Next. For any historical thriller fans out there, this is Traitor by Amanda Macrina, Poland, 1944. After the Soviet liberation of Lvov from Germany, the city remains a battleground between resistance fighters and insurgent armies, its loyalties torn between Poland and the Ukraine. 17-year-old Tolia is half Ukrainian, half Polish, and he joined the Soviet Red Army to keep himself alive and fed. When he not quite accidentally shoots his unit's political officer in the street, he is rescued by a band of Ukrainian freedom fighters. They might have saved him, but Tolia doesn't trust them. He especially doesn't trust the squad's war-scarred young leader, Solovey. Then a betrayal sends them both on the run, and in a city where loyalty comes second to self-preservation, a traitor can be an enemy or a savior, or sometimes both. Next. From superstar Lady Gaga, here is Channel Kindness, Stories of Kindness and Community. Lady Gaga has always believed in the importance of being yourself, being kind to yourself, and being kind to others, no matter who they are or where they're from. With that sentiment in mind, she and her mother, Cynthia, founded the Born This Day Foundation, a nonprofit organized organization dedicated to making the world a kinder place. Throughout the years, they've collected stories of kindness, bravery, and resilience from young people all over the world. Not only were they moved by these individual acts of kindness, but we here at Macmillan were also touched by the many stories 
of organizations and neighborhoods and entire communities that fully dedicated themselves to helping those in need and how they found new innovative ways to make our world a kinder and braver place. Individually and collectively, these stories prove that kindness not only saves lives, but is also transformational, and its never-ending ripples result in even more kind acts that can change our lives, our communities, and our world. Next. Here we have Instant Karma by Marissa Meyer. Chronic overachiever Prudence Daniels is always quick to cast judgment on the lazy, rude, and arrogant residents of her quiet coastal town. Her dreams of karmic justice are fulfilled when, after a wild night out with friends, she wakes up with the sudden ability to cast instant karma on anyone around her. Prue giddily makes use of the power of punishing everyone from public vandals to mean gossip, but of course there's just one person on whom her powers fail, Quint Erickson, her slacker of a lab partner. What do you know, he's also like annoyingly cute and impressively noble, especially when it comes to his work with the rescue center for local sea animals. When Prue resigns herself to working at the rescue center for extra credit, she begins to uncover truths about baby otters, environmental upheaval, and romantic cross signals, and not necessarily in that order. Her newfound karmic insights reveal just how thin the line is between virtue and vanity, generosity and greed, love and hate and faith. And just as an FYI, this book is not a graphic novel, but if the cover art seems familiar, it's because it was drawn by Caldica Honoré Beer Bronco. Next. And last for my YA titles is another blockbuster, Sky Hunter by Marie Liu. The Carenza Federation has conquered a dozen countries, leaving Mara as one of the last free nations in the world. Refugees flee to Mara's borders to escape worse than death, transformation into mutant war beasts known as ghosts, creatures of the Federation sends to attack Mara. The legendary strikers, which is Mara's elite fighting force, are trained to stop these ghosts. But as the number of ghosts grows and Carenza closes in, defeat seems inevitable. Still, one striker refuses to give up hope. Robbed of her voice at home, Talon knows firsthand the brutality of the Federation. This, their cruelty forced her and her mother to seek asylum in a country that considers their people repugnant. She finds comfort only with a handful of fellow warriors who have pledged their lives to one another and who are determined to push the Federation back at all costs. But when a mysterious prisoner is brought from the front, Talon senses that there's more to him than meets the eye. Is he a spy from the Federation or could he be the weapon that will save them all? That's it for me for now. I'll be back later to talk to you about middle grade chapter book and picture book stories. Thanks. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. We are now going to move on to some YA titles from Wednesday Books and Flatiron Books. Next slide, please. But before we do, be sure to check out our candid reviews of our YA titles at Days YA on our website. Next slide, please. First up, we have Hush by Dylan Farrow. Yes, that Dylan Farrow. 17-year-old Shay fears she may be cursed after the death of her brother. But when her mother is killed, Shay suspects foul play and sets her sights on justice. Hush is a powerful feminist fantasy full of twists that casts a ray of light into the shadows of a society based on silencing and manipulation. Next slide, please. The Insomniacs by Merritt Weisenberg. Ingrid hasn't been able to sleep since the day she fell off the high dive and got a concussion, and she can't remember what happened when she fell. Van, Ingrid's neighbor, former best friend, and forever crush, also has trouble sleeping and is also having trouble remembering certain key moments. And they both saw something strange happening at the abandoned house next door. So they start not sleeping together as they work to piece together their memories and uncover the unsettling secrets of their neighborhood. Next slide, please. A Golden Fury by Samantha Coho. This debut historical fantasy from Samantha Coho is set in 18th century Oxford. Thea Hope dreams of following in her alchemist mother's footsteps, and the pair are close to creating the Philosopher's Stone, which grants the possessor immortality and the power to turn any metal into gold. But when Thea's mother suddenly destroys the stone, Thea learns that the stone is cursed and anyone who tries to create it will lose their minds. Thea is sent to Oxford for her safety to live with her father, who doesn't know she exists, and she soon must figure out how to save the people she loves without destroying herself in the process. Next slide. Fable by Adrian Young. First there is Elin, the Viking warrior in Sky in the Deep. Then there is Tova, the powerful truth tongue in The Girl the Sea Gave Back. And now let me introduce you to Fable. 
She lives in a world made dangerous by the sea and by those who wish to profit from it, but the sea is the only home she's ever known. Now she must find her place and her family while trying to survive in a world built for men. Fable is filled with all the action, emotion, and lyrical writing that you love from Adrian Young. Next slide. And finally, we have The Silvered Serpents by Roshni Chakshi. Roshni Chakshi has returned to the dark and glamorous world of the Gilded Wolves with this dazzling sequel. Severin and his team are once again on the hunt for an ancient artifact, but they're also desperate to make amends for what they lost in Paris. This time, their journey takes them to Russia, where they hunt for a long lost artifact rumored to grant the power of God. The stakes are higher, the action is more intense, and the characters will break your heart and put it back together again. And it now has three starred reviews with School Library Journal calling it the sleeker, smarter, sharper, and bloodier follow-up that fans of the Gilded Wolves deserve. Next slide, please. Next slide. Hi again, everyone. This is Anthony here, and I'm excited to now share with you what's coming this summer and fall from Tor's YA imprint, Tor Teen, and its middle grade line, Starscape. And on that note, let's begin with Starscape. Next slide, please. And next slide. Here you'll see that we have the next adorable editions in the Lily to the Rescue early chapter book series from New York Times bestselling author W. Bruce Cameron. Here is the third in the series, The Not-So-Stinky Skunk, and the fourth book, Dog Dog Goose. The puppy world of author W. Bruce Cameron just continues to expand larger and larger. Bruce is the author of the mega popular A Dog's Purpose series and the screenwriter for their subsequent movie adaptations. He then launched a young reader series inspired by his A Dog's Purpose series called Puppy Tales. And now this spring, Bruce grew his puppy brand by launching a fully illustrated early chapter book series called Lily to the Rescue for ages seven to 10. So there's now puppy books for every level of readers making his books perfect for family reading time. The Lily to the Rescue series stars puppy Lily, who was once astray and is now living with her girl, Maggie Rose. Readers will follow Lily in each book as she follows her purpose to help rescue other animals in trouble. Both Dog Dog Goose and the Not So Stinky Skunk will be available simultaneously in hardcover and trade paperback on September 29th. Next. And now we'll move on to what's new and coming up from Tour Teen. Next slide, A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow. An enthralling tale of black girl magic and searing social commentary ready to rattle the bones. This is what Danielle Clayton, New York Times bestselling author of the Bell series, had to say upon reading Bethany C. Morrow's YA debut. Set in Portland, Oregon, this contemporary fantasy follows two best friends as they come to terms with their magical identities against today's challenges of racism and sexism. Tavia is a siren struggling to keep her true identity a secret in the aftermath of a siren murder trial that rocks the nation. Feeling alone in a city where very few black people with magic powers exist, Tavia finds solace in her friendship with Effie, a young black girl trying to make sense of her own magical abilities and unravel her haunted past. Outside of the praise this book has already received from countless YA authors, such as Daniel Jose Older, L.L. McKinney, and Jay Coles, a Song Below Water has also been named one of Forbes' top 10 most anticipated books of 2020 and has received a starred review from Booklist, which says, Morrow expertly and smartly explores race, bigotry, oppression, and injustice against a backdrop of ordinary life with a dose of the supernatural added to the mix. A Song Below Water come, came out just a few weeks ago and was an instant indie bestseller. We hope you'll add this vital story to your collection today. Next. The Princess Will Save You by Sarah Henning. This feminist YA fantasy inspired by The Princess Bride asks the question, what if Buttercup saved Wesley? Princess Amarande's commoner true love, the stable boy Luca, has been stolen away to coerce her into a political marriage. Faced with a choice between saving her love or her kingdom, Amarande takes up her sword and sets out to save both. This book answers the many fans of storybook fantasy that yearn for the traditional damsel in distress narrative to be completely upended. And who better to adapt a classic tale like The Princess Bride than Sarah Henning, author of the massively successful Sea Witch series that reimagined the origin of The Little Mermaid's Ursula. 
This story of adventure, identity, and true love uses a familiar and cherished, cherished setting to tell an explosive, sweet, and boldly feminist new story. Next. T.J. Klune's The Extraordinaries. Mason Deaver, best-selling author of I Wish You All the Best, called this the most down-to-earth book about superheroes I've ever read, and went on to add, I laughed, I cried, and I had a smile on my face the entire time I was, I was reading it. And honestly, I have to agree, there's no better way to describe this book. It's so fun and funny, and will just make you smile the whole time. The Extraordinaries is T.J. Klune's YA debut, and is a queer coming-of-age story about Nick Bell, a fanboy with ADHD and the superheroes he loves. Nick is the most popular fan fiction writer in the Extraordinaries fandom. And who are the Extraordinaries? They're the superheroes and villains that save, threaten, and fly around his city. And that swoon-worthy hero he's been writing amazingly cringy self-insert fan fiction about might also be his best friend and love interest. Nick and his dad provide an alternatively heartbreaking and heartwarming window into a relationship where in the face of overwhelming grief, both are in desperate need of each other's support. And though they stumble as they reach out, they never stop reaching. YA readers fed up with the absentee parent trope are going to love this book. In summary, come for the LGBTQ positive inclusivity and stay for the hilarious jokes, touching family relationships, neuro neurodiverse representation, and yes, absolutely those super queer superheroes. The Extraordinaries is coming out soon on July 14th. And it's a superhero summer blockbuster we all need right now. And next, Isa will continue with more tour teen titles. Hi again, everyone. Next up, we have Blood Witch, the third novel in Susan Dennard's best-selling white epic fantasy Witchland series, releasing in paperback this summer. Why readers can't resist a bad boy. So longtime fans of the series and new readers will delight in unraveling the mysterious past of complicated fan favorite Aidwin in this third installment. Readers can spend this summer catching up with Aidwin's journey as we gear up for the upcoming and highly anticipated release of the next Witchlands novel, Witch Shadow, out February 2021. Book one and two in the series, Truth Witch and Win Witch, are available now featuring bold new covers, and book three, Bl Blood Witch, releases in paperback in just a few weeks on July 14th. Next. Next up, we have Each of Us a Desert by award-winning author Mark Oshiro. Coming off of their Schneider Family Book Award win for their debut novel, Anger is a Gift, Mark Oshiro segues into the world of YA fantasy with their next novel. Set against a magical desert landscape where stories and one's deepest secrets come to life, this is a queer Latinx coming of age tale about two young women struggling to find their place in the world while navigating identity, loss, and first love. Perfect for fans of Adam Silvera and Julia Alvarez, Each of Us a Desert is out September 15th, and Oshiro's debut novel, Anger is a Gift, is currently available in paperback. Next. Lauren Shippen's Bright Sessions YA series is based on her acclaimed podcast centering on the lives of a group of young people coming to terms with their super abilities with help from a mysterious therapist named Dr. Bright. A Neon Darkness is a second standalone novel set in the Bright Sessions universe and revolves around the question, what if the villain of your story is you? Shippen's next novel in the series reveals the untold origin story of supervillain Damien the bad guy that millions of listeners love to hate, and millions of new readers are about to meet. Set in Los Angeles in 2006, longtime Bright Sessions fans and new readers witness the rise of a villain with the ability to compel anyone to desire what he desires. Shippen masterfully constructs a thrilling and thoughtful fantasy that tackles and explores themes of found family, queerness, power, and consent. A Neon Darkness is out September 29th, and the first standalone novel in the series, The Infinite Noise, is out in paperback on September 29th as well. Next. Thank you, Issa. Uh, hey, Alexander again. Uh, our next title from Tour Teen is Eventide by Sarah Goodman. 
Goodman's exciting debut feels new and nostalgic all at once. A gothic historical fantasy mystery set in small town at 1907 Arkansas and filled with the cozy domesticity of Little Women by Louisa May Alcott and all the eerie atmosphere of the works of Shirley Jackson and Charlotte Perkins Gilman. A young woman will uncover secrets from her family's haunted past, and you can experience the magic and madness for yourself when Eventide releases this fall on October 6th. Next. The Brightest Night by Jennifer L. Armentrout. New York Times bestselling author JLA is back, and so is the world of the Lux in this game-changing third installment of the beloved Origin series. Readers will be reunited with favorite star-crossed couple, Evie and Luck, as they uncover shocking truths about themselves and each other. He is the darkest star and she is the burning shadow. Together, they make the bright brightest night, but can they stay together? And good news for diehard fans and new readers. The entire origin series will have a brand new look this fall, making it the perfect time to read the series again or dive into the world of the Lux for the very first time. The Brightest Night will be available October 20th. Next. And finally, from Tortine, the YA debut of internationally best-selling author Charlie Jane Anders, Victories Greater Than Death. The universe is calling and time is running out. Anders' long-awaited YA debut tells the story of Tina, a human clone of the most brilliant alien commander in all the galaxies. She's got a crew she can trust, a best friend at her side, and a world to save from intergalactic war. And the good news doesn't run out. Victories Greater Than Death is the first thrilling adventure in the Unstoppable series, and there is so much more to come. You can ride to save the world with Tina when Victories Greater Than Death comes out on April 13th, 2021. Next. And that wraps up our YA titles. Thank you for your time. And if you like the sound of our titles, you can follow us on various social media at Tortine. Additionally, please feel free to email us about any of the titles we've presented or visit our website to sign up for our newsletter. Thanks again, and we hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. All right. Hi, all. I am back and ready to close this out with middle grade through picture book titles. Um, first up, we have They Threw Us Away by Daniel Krauss, illustrated by Rosina Kai. Welcome to the Teddy Saga. Buddy wakes up in the middle of a garbage dump filled with a certain awareness. He is a teddy bear and he spent time at a store, capital S, waiting for his future to begin and he is meant for the loving arms of a child. Now he knows one more thing, that something has gone terribly wrong. Soon he finds other discarded teddies, Horace, Sugar, Sunny, and Reginald. Though they aren't sure how their luck soured, they all agree that they need to get back to the store if they're ever to fulfill their destinies as being a child's toy. So they embark on a perilous trek across the dump and into the outer world. Filled with ravenous rats, screeching gulls, and a menacing world in front of them, the teddies will need to overcome insurmountable challenges to find their way home. Equal parts, Toy Story, and Lord of the Flies, They Threw Us Away is the unforgettable start of a captivating series. Next. Do you consider yourself a forgetful person? Are you bored during quarantine? If you answered yes to either of those questions or know a young reader who would, look no further than How to Remember Everything by Jacob Sager Weinstein, illustrated by Barbara Malley. Next. Kids will learn how to ace history tests by memorizing dates, feel confident about remembering people's names, win card games by mastering entire decks, and hang on to happy memories for a lifetime. This invaluable memory guide for children is full of recall building techniques, fun challenges, and hilarious art. Next. The Real World and Fairy Tales Collide and Never After by Melissa De La Cruz. Nothing ever happens in Philomena Jefferson Show's sleepy suburban town of North Pasadena, but one day when Philomena is walking home on her own, something strange happens. She's being followed by Jack Stalker, or stalked by being Stalker, one of the heroes in the 13th Fairy, a series of books she loves about a brave girl and her ragtag group of friends who save their world from an evil enchantress. She must be dreaming or still reading a book, but Jack is insistent. He is real, the stories are real, and Philomena must come with him at once. Soon, she is thrust into the world of evil fairies and beautiful princesses, sorcerers, and slayers, where an evil queen drives her ruthless armies to destroy what is left of the fairy tribes. 
to save herself and the kingdom of Westphalia, Philomena must find the truth behind the fairy tales and set the world back to right before the cycle of sleep and destruction begins once more. Next. Turning away from fairy tales into nonfiction, we have history comics, The Great Chicago Fire, Rising from the Ashes, by Alex Grodens and Kate Hannigan. The start of a new series from first second, this tells the true story of how a city rose from one of the worst catastrophes in American history and how this disaster forever changed how homes, buildings, and communities are constructed. Next. A deadly blaze engulfs Chicago for two terrifying days. A brother, a sister, and a helpless puppy must race through the city to stay one step ahead of the devilish inferno. But can they reunite with their lost family before it's too late? If you're familiar with First Second Science comics, just imagine that history comics are sort of in the same vein where they're filled with nonfiction facts, but readers have a narrative in which they can follow along easier. With history comics, you can travel back in time to the deserts of the American Southwest, the riot at Stonewall Inn and beyond. And in this new uh, graphic novel series, the past comes alive. Next. We continue in history with Chance by Uri Shulovitz. With backlist sales of over 2.3 million copies, Uri, one of FSG Book for Young Readers' most acclaimed picture book creators, details the eight-year odyssey of how he and his Jewish family escaped the terrors of the Nazis by fleeing Warsaw for the Soviet Union. It was during those years with threats at every turn that young Yuri experienced his awakening as an artist, an experience that played a key role during this difficult time. By terms dreamlike and nightmarish, this heavily illustrated account of determination, courage, family loyalty, and the luck of coincidence is a true event. Next. All right, tra going away from history and back to fiction, we have The Book of Fatal Errors by Dashka Slater. You might recognize Dashka's name. She is the author of both the picture book series Escargo and the young adult nonfiction book The 57 Bus. Dashka is a multifaceted writer and is turning her talents to this middle grade fantasy. Rufus doesn't just make mistakes, he makes errors. Clumsy and awkward, he is constantly teased by bullies, but now it's summer and Rufus is free. He roams the wildlands of his grandfather's mysterious homestead, blissfully unaware of the danger up ahead. Rufus and his snooty cousin Abigail soon become entangled in the tantalizing world of the failings, mischievous fairy-like creatures desperate to find their way home. In helping the failings, Rufus tumbles down a dark path, rich with age-old secrets and difficult truths. Any move he makes might be his final fatal error or perhaps his most spectacular beginning. Next. How about a little mystery in your life? Be on the lookout for the Dare Sisters by Jess Rinker. Savannah Dare has always wanted to be a pirate. Same. She grew up on Legends of Blackbeard from her grandfather, her best friend and fellow treasure hunter. But her grandfather is gone now. Savannah and her sisters, Frances and Jolene, are left to find Blackbeard's lost loot all on their own. It was their grandfather's dream and they can't let him down. No one else in their small town um, island believes Blackbeard's treasure is still truly out there. No one except their grandfather's mysterious old business partner who is determined to find it himself. And when their family home is endangered, the Dare sisters realize that finding Blackbeard's treasure is their only hope. Next. Remy Lai, creator of Pie in the Sky, is back with Fly on the Wall. Henry's family treats him like a baby. He's not allowed to go anywhere without his sister slash chaperone slash bodyguard. And he definitely cannot take a journey halfway around the world all by himself. But that's exactly his plan anyway. After his family's annual trip to visit his father in Singapore is canceled, Henry decides that he doesn't want to be cooped up at home with his overprotective family and BFF turn NRFF, which stands for not really friend forever. Plus, he's hiding a your life is over if you get caught secret. He is the creator of an anonymous gossip cartoon, and he is on the verge of getting caught. Determined to prove his independence and avoid punishment for his crimes, Henry embarks on his greatest adventure ever, hoping that it won't turn into the greatest disaster ever. Next. All right. Here we have Dungeon Critters by Natalie Race and Sarah Goddard. Quests, plots, evil plants, magic, and mayhem join the Dungeon Critters, a tight-knit squad of animal companions on a wild adventure investigating a sinister botanical conspiracy among the furry nobility. What a sentence that was. Next. As they risk their lives traveling through haunted dungeons, swamps, and high society balls, they also come closer together as friends. Motivated by rivalries, ideals, and a lust for adventure, these critters navigate not only perils and dangers of the natural world, but also perils and dangers of the heart. Hand this book to any budding D&D &D player and fantasy lover. Next. 
Know any puzzle lovers? Make sure they check out the Explorer's Code by Allison K. Hines. Idlewood Manor has been uninhabited for decades now uh, until Mathless Charlie, who won an admission in a puzzle contest and who was intrigued by the strange numbers he finds on Idlewood's walls. His restless sister Anna had to be dragged to the house, but then she discovers it has a hidden floor. Emily's parents brought her to the mansion on a secret mission, and she's determined to prove herself to them. All three kids suit unlock clues to Idlewood's mysterious past and the famous female explorer who's connected to it and the secret treasure that she's left behind. But the adults around them are also hunting for the treasure. Charlie, Anna, and Emily will have to overcome their differences and work as a team to solve Idlewood's puzzle before it's too late. Next. Here is Girl Giant and the Monkey King by Van Huang. 11-year-old Tom is keeping a secret. She is strong. And I don't just mean strong, I mean like super strong, like freakishly strong. And it is making it impossible for her to fit in at her new middle school. In a desperate bid to get rid of her super strength, Tom makes a deal with the Monkey King, a powerful deity and legendary trickster she accidentally released from his 500 year prison sentence. Tom agrees to help the Monkey King get back his magical staff if he takes away her strength so she can just be like all of the other kids at her school. Soon, Tom is swept up in an ancient and fantastical world where demons, dragons, and jade princesses actually exist. But she quickly discovers that magic can't cure everything and dealing with the trickster god might be more trouble than it's worth. Hand this magical tale to fans of Rick Riordan. Next. This stunning picture book is Voices, or not picture book, Voices of Justice, Poems About People Working for a Better World by George L. Lyon and illustrated by Jennifer M. Potter. In the face of injustice, the world has always looked to brave individuals to speak up and to spark change. Nelson Mandela used his voice to bring down apartheid. Jane Goodall gave voice to the primates who couldn't speak for themselves. The women of Greenham Common used their collective voice to fight against preparations for nuclear war. And today's youth, like Shooters Cat Martinez, the students of Stoneman Douglas High School, and Greta Thunberg, unite their voices to stop gun violence, to save the planet, and so much more. Next. Through enlightening poems by award-winning poet and author George L. Lyon and stunning portraits by artist Jennifer Potter, Voices of Justice introduces young readers to the groundbreaking work of the people who fought and continue to fight to make the world a better place. Next. Okay, our last middle grade title is Spin With Me by Amy Polanski. From the author of the critically acclaimed Gracefully Grayson comes a thoughtful and sensitive novel about non-binary identity and first love. In this elegant dual narrative, Essie is a 13-year-old girl feeling glum about starting a new school after her professor father takes a temporary teaching position in a different town. She has exactly 100 days here and she cannot wait for them to be over. But she meets Ollie, delicate, blue eyes, short hair, easy smile. At first, Essie thinks that she has a crush on a, tip, on a beautiful boy, but as her crush blossoms, she soon realizes that Ollie is not a boy or a girl, but gender non-binary. Meanwhile, Ollie is experiencing a crush of their own on Essie. As Ollie struggles to balance their passion for queer advocacy with their other interests, they slowly find themselves falling for a girl whose stay is about to come to an end. Can the two unwind their merry-go-round of feelings for each other before it's too late? You'll have to find out in November. Next. Moving on to chapter books and books for younger independent readers, we have Dave the Unicorn by Pip Bird, illustrated by David O'Connell. Welcome to Unicorn School, where you get your own unicorn best friend. You go on magical quests together. There's glitter. There's more glitter. There is so much glitter. Mira can hardly contain her excitement as her fellow students are paired with their unicorn. Darcy is assigned a statuesque star whose shy, shimmering coat always catches the light. Raheem is matched with Brave, whose every step reverberates like thunder. And Mira is peer, paired with, next, Dave. Dave loves donuts. He doesn't follow directions very well, and he farts a lot. Mira is a little, a lot disappointed, but she soon realizes Dave is unlike his fellow unicorns in another way. He's a little smarter than they are. When a school trip goes awry, the only way to save the day is for Mira to embrace her unexpected unicorn best friend. Next. Spend some more time in the sewers with the investigators. Take the plunge by John Patrick Green. Sewer-loving secret agents Mango and Brash are plunged into a new mystery and a big mess in this hilarious adventure-packed graphic novel, Investigators Take the Plunge. Suit headquarters is under attack and Mango and Brash are going undercover and underground disguised as city sewer workers to unclog a sticky situation. Next. But when their search for the criminal cracker dial backfires, the toilets they travel through back up 
and the investigators take the blame for it. Can Mango and Brash restore their good names and put the real culprit behind bars before the whole city is in deep, deep water? You will find out soon in September. And the first book in the series um, is out now. So if you haven't read it, make sure you catch up. Next. I don't know about you, but when I'm bored or fidgety, I like to braid my own hair to keep my hands busy. If you know anyone else who's like that, or if they don't have hair long enough to braid, give them a show how guide by Keith Zhu. This pocket sized 101 series introduces kids of all ages to the perennial talents, hobbies, skills, and hand on activities they'll treasure for a lifetime. Next. Each book includes a curated collection of essential skills and each step is illustrated, allowing kids to truly and easily master the basics regardless of how they learn. Finally, fun and friendly tutorials you can understand at a glance. Show how guides are an affordable stocking stuffer, birthday gift, or impulse buy. Next. Okay, next up we have Monster and Boy by Hannah Barnaby, illustrated by Anusha Saeed. Once there was a monster who loved a boy. He knew the sound of the boy's voice. He knew the smell of the boy's dirty socks and he knew the sight of the boy's slippers by the side of the bed where he lived. The monster had lived under the boy's bed for many years without ever meeting the boy, but he loved the boy more and more with each passing day. The monster would have carried on with this one-sided friendship had the boy's mother not assured the boy one night that there was no such thing as monsters. Shows how much adults know. Next. Determined to prove the boy's mother wrong, the monster reveals himself to the boy and thus begins one of the greatest friendships in chapter book history. Full of adventure, humor, and lots of surprises, coupled with charming two-color illustrations, Monster and Boy is the perfect chapter book series to share with all the newly independent readers and monsters in your life. I call this book a cross between Monsters, Inc. and A Little Prince. Next. Going into picture books, we have Probably a Unicorn by Jory John, illustrated by Kay Thai Steele. From the dynamic and expressive team of New York Times bestselling author Jory John and illustrator Kay Thai Steele comes a hilarious picture book featuring a new and unforgettable character who proves you can be anything you want to be, probably. Everyone calls him a rhinoceros, but just between us, he's probably a unicorn. Next. What, you don't believe it? Well, he has a horn and so do unicorns, duh. He's beautiful and unicorns are also beautiful. And there are at least 50 or 60 other reasons he's probably a unicorn. Sure, there might be like a few differences between rhinos and unicorns, but hey, don't, don't worry about that. Those differences don't make him any less of a unicorn. Next. Here we have All Welcome Here by James Preller and illustrated by Mary Grant Prey. All Welcome Here features haiku poetry by acclaimed children's author James Preller and stunning painting and collage art from Mary Grant Prey. Next. This beautiful book is destined to become an evergreen favorite for new students who share these experiences during this special time of year buying school supplies, running to catch the school bus, finding your new classroom, meeting your teachers, and making new friends. Featuring a diverse cast of characters, this book is perfect for back to school story times or any time you want to remind your community that all are welcome in your school or library. Next. Natalie Portman's Fables by Natalie Portman. Actress, director, producer, and activist Natalie Portman is adding author to her resume. When she became a mother to her daughter after years of only having a son, she soon noticed that many books given to her were incredibly gendered, either very stereotypically feminine or overwhelmingly masculine. Next. In rewriting these fables to not be so defined by the gender binary, Natalie has created modern takes on timeless life lessons from realize, realizing that there is no right way to live to respecting our planet and learning what really makes someone a winner. Told with playful, a playful kid-friendly voice and perfectly paired with, with Jana Matias' charming artwork, Portman's insightful retellings of the tortoise and the hare, the three little pigs, and country mouse and city mouse are ideal for reading aloud and are sure to become beloved additions to family libraries. Next. We have A Little Space for Me by Jennifer Gray Olson. Have you, have you ever felt that the world is just too much? Not merely what's happening in it, but the world itself. It scents, it sounds, it smells, the chaotic energy and the constant activity. The little bespeckled protagonist of this deeply relatable picture book just wants to get a little distance, a little space, away from a world that can be both wonderful and yet very overwhelming. Next. She creates her own space. To be interpreted as either alone time or a general inner peace she feels from this alone time and bottles it up, carrying it around with her whenever she feels she needs it. Gently exploring the healthiness of boundaries and alone time through adorable and awe-inspiring art, this book is perfect for larger story times and reading one-on-one -on -one, snug in your own space. Next. 
For kids who always beg for bedtime stories, look no further than The Little Fox and the Wild Imagination by Yorma Chacon, illustrated by Dan Santat. Debut otter Yorma Chacon, member of the hit comedy trio The Lonely Island, has paired up with New York Times bestselling Caldecott medal winning illustrator Dan Santat to create Little Fox and the Wild Imagination, a picture book about time, space, and even giant robot squids. Next, beware. This is a tale of great caution, terror, and destruction. Well, of bath time and bedtime and the battle in between. This is the story of Little Fox and one very big imagination. Next. And closing us out is hopefully a familiar face to you all with Hello Arnie by Lori Keller. Arnie the Donut wants to know what kind of giant donut you are in this picture book for preschoolers by bestselling Geisel Award winning creator Lori Keller. Arnie is excited to say hello to all his pastry friends in the bakery. There are all the usual confection suspects, chocolate, glazed, French twist, long john. But there is one pastry that he's never met before. This pastry looks nothing like the others. Hmm. Who could it be? Spoiler alert, it's the reader. Next. This charming picture book introduces children to everyone's favorite donut through a series of questions that even the youngest reader will love taking part in. Next. That is everything from me. Thank you so much for joining us today. My information is here. If you have any questions about any of the titles, feel free to check us out um, for more resources and activities at our website and feel free to give us a shout out or come check us out on Twitter. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Melissa, and a huge thanks to all today's wonderful panelists. Tomorrow, all attendees will receive an email containing links to today's slide presentation, title list, certificate of completion, and video recording. For more about Booklist webinars, be sure to visit booklistonline.com webinars, where you can view archives of past webinars and register for upcoming programs, including the 2020 Carnegie Awards. If you haven't already, be sure to check out Booklist Reader, where Booklist contributors post daily about all things books and library land. And did you know that Booklist content is freely available until all, to all until further notice? Start reading with our digital edition, a format that pairs the page-by-page -page reading experience of print with the convenience of online access, access at booklistonline.com. Interested in subscribing? Take advantage of this special webinar offer to get print, online, digital, and archive access to Booklist for only $99. Thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar, and one more thank you to our sponsors, Macmillan Library Marketing, Macmillan Children's Publishing Group, and TOR. This concludes today's webinar. <laughs>